Well, hello, hello. How are you today? I'm here with my good friend, Sergio Gomez, and we're going to talk about how to be more playful in your creative process. I'm so excited about this episode today, Sergio. Let me just say, I've been talking to a lot of clients of mine and they have been needing some playfulness in their creative process. So I was just thinking about all of the things that I tell them in our coaching calls to let them know how to do this. So what do you think about this topic today? I think that's a great topic. I can't wait to uh, delve into it and talk about ideas and how to be playful. And uh, yeah, I think so, right? I think. I think that's uh, when uh, we can uh, also explore new ideas because we are willing to uh, and involve in play. <laughs> that's right. So one of the first things that I think is important to remember is that we can change the rules at any time, right? One of the biggest things that I hear is they feel a lot of pressure to create something specific, to reach a certain goal. And because they feel all this pressure on them, it stops them from even getting started. Mm -hmm. So if we change the rules, that means that they can create artwork or create something new for themselves or create something new for a friend to give it away, or even create something new with the intention of destroying it afterwards. Mm. You know, if you follow this process of changing the rules, you can pretty much create any new rule for yourself that's going to help alleviate that pressure so that you can get started and get into this playful curiosity of experimenting without the worry of what's going to be the outcome at the end. Mm -hmm. I love that one because a lot of times, you know, when you approach, a, let's say if you're a painter, you approach a, a canvas that's blank and that, you know, it's just beautifully pre-stretched and is ready to work. Already in your intention, like you're already thinking this work has to be a complete something, right? Has to be a finished something. And, uh, you know, when you change the rules and you don't have those expectations, then I think it, it totally changes the way you approach it. And a lot of mm. times, you know, it's, it's just that pressure of here's this uh, canvas uh, that I purchased cost me $50, $60. Here it is now. It must be, uh, you know, the end result X, Y, and Z. And I, I love that. I love that, you know, the idea of changing rules. I do that sometimes also with my own work and, um, and, and you know, it, it kind of opens up a whole lot of new opportunities. You know, I have in the past discovered new ideas just because I allow myself not to fall in the trap of this has to be a finished mm -hmm. work of art. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just a step in, into another direction. I think when we have like an outcome or a goal in mind, we maybe are looking at it like through this tiny lens when really how good would it feel if you expanded that lens and broke all those rules and just embraced the process in a way that felt like fully alive and, and there's no way you could fail at it. Right. So that just creates, I mean, I can even feel more open just talking about it like that, just like taking the pressure off. And I hope those of you watching, like you feel more open to just with the idea that you can change the rules at any time. Mm -hmm. I love and, that. and no one can say anything about that. So the next one is to embrace the unfamiliar. So what I mean by that is you could change how you create in the location that you create. So like for me, sometimes I love to just go build a fire and sit by the fire with a notepad and start strategizing my next steps. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not in my office which is the space right here. This is where I work, but I'm in a new location and I'm giving myself that space to really dream into what I want to do next, what I want to create next. And I think that when we create a new environment, it just brings up all sorts of new ideas. And I think that's a great way to, you know, stop doing the th same old, same old that we're used to change it up and embrace what's unfamiliar. Also like collaborating with someone else. That's a great way to do something that's different and maybe even like changing the tools that you use to create. And there's a lot of things that we can do to embrace the unfamiliar. That's going to open up. Like I said, that lens of what we think we should do and just do what feels more playful. Absolutely. One, I, I think a good example for that, uh, just last uh, uh, two weeks ago or so, I took a class of um, a book bookmaking class, you know, artist bookmaking. So I have a friend uh, who is an artist and I saw on his Instagram, he posted, he's an award-winning, um, you know, book artist and uh, he posted he was going to do a workshop. 
it's online and like what well, you know i never take a workshop on you know book bookmaking it's something like you said totally unfamiliar to me i love uh artist books i have a, a few that i have collected from other artists i have mm -hmm. done some of my own but i never really took a class you know so i'm like i think this will be great so i, I spent two days uh in this uh, online workshop and it was fabulous you know i really enjoyed it it really opened my eyes to a whole new idea by the end of the session i had already a book laid out idea of what i'm going to do with it so now i just gotta do it right like piece it together but it was it was kind of like you know an unfamiliar territory mm -hmm. that i spent time into getting into and uh you know the result was great so now i have uh, something that I can create out of that experience. So I, I love that, you know, uh, getting ourselves involved in something that is unfamiliar, sometimes even perhaps a little uh, strange, may, maybe in, in some way or fashion, um, out of the ordinary. I think that keeps our mindset kind of uh, on the discovery mode, right? Let's see what yes. we find here. Yeah. I love that. And when you get your book done, you have to let us know because I, I will. definitely want to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> I will, I will. It's, it's going to be a small edition. Probably I'm going to make only 10 of them because it's a, it's a handmade artist book. So oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So it's, 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 it's the, the book itself is a work of art. So exactly. it's going to be really fun and exciting. I'm right now working on ideas for the tools and materials and things like that. Mm. I love that you're dreaming into this next idea that you have, because that brings us to our next point where it's important to use your mind to visualize that playfulness that you want to create for yourself. So for those of you watching right now, I want you to imagine that you're a little kid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you are creating your dream play date for yourself and your work and your process that you do. And what would that look like? Where would you be? What would you be creating? And what are the tools that you're using? Mm -hmm. And just sit, you don't even have to do anything. You can just dream into it. And just imagine from that place, from that little kid that you know very well, much many of us use that little inner child within us to right. create. And so I think when we start to engage with our inner child and ask them questions like, what would be playful for you? What would feel good for you? And then create that space for ourselves right now. I think that would be a really fun experiment just to see what we could do in our new creative process, just by asking our inner child, what feels good and playful. Yeah. I love this one. And I, I love this topic because, uh, I love playfulness in all the things that I do as an artist. And as you were talking about this one, like, oh, you know, I just they have another another example for you. Uh, this one as a curate as a curator myself, you know, uh, right now I have a call for artists. It's called Monumental, and it kind of started like that. I was thinking, you know, what would be something fun to do that I have never done before as a curator, and it would be great. Like, what if you have, you know, when as an artist, sometimes you make the small pieces, right? And sometimes you think uh, this this is a small painting or drawing or photograph would really look really amazing if I could enlarge it like 12 feet high, 12 feet wide, mm -hmm. right? And uh, it would be really cool. So thinking about that, you know, just in the playfulness, I like to imagine myself how I could extend this. Like, well, I could use augmented reality or uh, virtual reality and recreate a, a museum-like setting and have artists, you know, submit small works that they could be enlarged you know and 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 that's it you know it all happens magically behind the screen and mm -hmm. that's kind of what gave birth to the show called monumental but it's like you said you know me thinking about the possibilities having fun with it and imagining what it would be like if this was an actual physical show but you know it would be recreated digitally so i love the idea of uh, always kind of imagining the possibilities and see where they go i think that is mm -hmm. really fun like I, the other day i was imagining creating some new artwork and, you know, typically I would have my easel and I would have everything set up like a professional, but then I thought, what would it be like if I just like spread everything out on the floor because little kids love to get on the yeah. floor and just created this really fun just space for myself, maybe light some candles, put some flowers there, who knows, and yeah. just kind of like play into that idea that. I'm just sitting on the floor and I'm just being curious and I'm just having fun. And there's really no like end goal in mind, except for me to just be present right. and to do the work and to just love on myself through the process without judging or critiquing it along the way and just see what comes out. 
and be happy with just the, just the sheer fact that I sat there and was present with myself in a way that was unique and different than the usual. And so I kind of got excited about that. And that's why I was thinking more about this topic because a lot of my coaching clients are, are needing help in their creative process. And most of the time they're come to me really just bound up by fear Mm -hmm. because of past experiences. And the more that we can just be kind and gentle and loving and playful with ourselves, the easier it is for us to open up and to access all those um, incredible creative ideas that just come to us. And so I'm so glad that you like this topic today, Sergio. I hope that you can go forth in the next week being more playful <laughs> <laughs> yeah no i i love it because i and before the you know we continue really quickly i, I think that sometimes when we think playfulness we may feel like the word sounds like it's diminishing the artwork you know the mm-hmm. seriousness of the work but it's not you know it's, it's a it's a way of approaching the process you can mm-hmm. still work on a very serious piece Yes. But the, the way in which you approach it has this playfulness that allows you to expand your creative ideas and expand your creative you know, um, or options that you may have, whether if you were approaching it very strict in one direction. Great. Well, if you guys um, are playful this week, coming forward with your work, please take a picture of what you're creating. Give tag us on social media. Let us see what you're doing. We would love to see what you're creating with a more playful process. So right, thanks right. for watching. We're going to have another great episode next week, but before we end today's episode, Sergio, where can our friends find you online? Well, this time what I'm going to share, since we talk about this show, Monumental, which are uh-huh. the deadline for to submit for this very playful, awesome uh, show that happens online, uh, just go to SergioGomezCurates.net. Again, SergioGomezCurates.net. You can submit totally free, and it is pretty fun, really cool, and um, good luck. You know, it's just going to be a really great show. Looking forward to that. Awesome. And you guys can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Beth English. You can go to my website at bethenglish.com. If you have questions about how to make your creative process the most amazing process that blows your mind and excites your life, well, then send me a message because I would love to talk to you about that. (laughs) Absolutely. That sounds good. Well, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day and we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, Beth. Good to see you. Bye.